How's it going, everyone? My name is Michael SK, and welcome back to Chaos Head Noah. So it looks like uh, we're at the police station or detective department or somewhere. Uh, these people are looking into the uh, lovely new generation madness that's been going on. And we've been following a couple detectives, an older man and his, uh, and his young apprentice of sorts, who seems to be the more reliable one. But uh, they seem to be interested in our main character, Takumi. Uh, they may have deduced that he is the one that ran from the third incident. Uh, I mean, he was at the scene of the crime and he never said anything. So whether he's at fault or not, I mean, the police do have good reason to talk with him if they do think that. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Takumi continues to have a little bit of everything going wrong with him as he tries to understand why things are happening. Um, he kind of had a strange, I guess, everybody disappeared occurrence. And uh, that's how the last episode ended. We we actually talked with Shogun, who I thought was another personality of Takumi. Uh, things are getting really, really weird, if they haven't already. I certainly didn't think they'd end up merging all three of the task forces into one. Yasuji Ban sighed bitterly to himself as he looked at the rows of detectives assembled in the Shibuya police station's large conference room. So we are at the police station. The Inokashira line Shibuya station bathroom murder, what the media had taken to call vampire, had pushed the Shibuya police's available manpower to its absolute limits. And with three bizarre murders in the same district, it was looking more and more likely that a single culprit was responsible for all of them. Some officers had suggested leaving the Cornelius Tower suicides to the Youth Crimes Division, but the media was treating them as part of New Gen, and they'd take a lot of flack if it seemed they were leaving it out. It was only natural that HQ would decide to bring the task forces together into one big team. Right now, the new, bigger group was going back over each other or each of the cases individually, excuse me. There was a big screen at the front of the room showing slides of the crime scenes. Sua had been assigned to give the briefing on them. He and Bon had been up all night frantically going through the case files for all four cases. Good luck, kid, Bon said to himself, resting his head on his palm. That was our first incident there. Beautiful. ニュージェネとマスコミが故障している4つの事件の中では一番最初に発生しています。午後11時半頃、渋谷コーネリアスタワー屋上のヘリポートから男女5人が転落、全員死亡しました。5人は全員未成年の高校生、男が3人、女が
今はタワーに入っている企業の社員に話を聞いているところです被害者たち5人には今のところ自殺する理由は見つかっていません家族、友人、学校の教師など5人中4人の関係者が口を揃えて自殺する理由などないと断言しています The slide changed moving to the second case, the murder of the college kid and unborn baby under the Shibuya station tracks. That is a very gruesome scene. 続いて、通称、妊娠男事件についてですが、事件発生は9月19日、通称、集団ダイブ事件から12日後、第一発見者は現場近くのカラオケ店店員。遺体発見は午前5時前後被害者は渋谷区在住の大学3年生近衛千津夫21歳発見された時にはすでに死亡してました死亡推定時刻は遺体発見の約4時間前19日の午前1時頃です遺体は腹部が不自然に大きく膨れ上がっており中から胎児が発見されました司法解剖の結果、被害者は生きたまま腹部を何者かに切開され、胃の中に胎児を入れられたようです。Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the real gruesome part is that he was still alive when that all happened. 胎児はすでにその時点で亡くなっていたと思われます。Which, uh, that's probably for the best, to be honest. I mean, obviously nothing is great about the situation, but would you rather have a live infant? That's being put in there or a dead one. I mean, it sucks that one was even put in there in the first place, but you know, it's just which one is like not as terrible. He got a shibo stanoa, Fukubo, Hongo, Sareta, Ato. Hongo Stabu, Kakimustari, Hongo Ito, Ichibu, Hikichinita, Kesekiga, Miraremasta. Taijua, Nishin, Hachkanget, Gurai, no Jotai, De, Hahoe, no Karadakara, Teo Sekai, De, Toriagera, Tato, Kanga, Ramas. 胎児の母親については今のところ見つかってませんその生死についても不明です DNA 鑑定の結果胎児と被害者には血縁関係はありませんでしたちなみに胎児の血液型は B 型被害者の血液型は A 型です<笑> Hmm Okay Yeah I mean that's that is an interesting detail There was like literally no connection between these characters Or at least the families. Sua paused to take a breath, talking so much had tired him out, it had looked like giving a presentation in front of this many older detectives was probably nerve wracking too. Sugini, Dai San no Jikem. Maruyama Cho, Haritske Satsujin Jikem des. There was a slight pause before Crucified Slide came up. Korega Gemba Shashin des. Jikem Hatsewa, Kugats Niju Kunichi. 被害者は太田久志56歳、都東大学教授。You know, all things considered, he doesn't look that terrible. Like, he's not all bloody, to be honest. 第一発見者は、現場のすぐ近くのアパートに住む男性。被害者の死因は考察でした。殺害された後で、10本程度の釘を使って貼り付けにされていました。見ての通り、遺体には外傷はほとんどありません。Okay, so it wasn't that bloody of an incident. Then my question is, Remy, we saw her there and she was bloody. 釘についても、貼り付けは一部肉体を貫通しているものもありましたが、基本的には衣服を通して貼り付けられている状態です。マスコミでは、貼り付け、血の惨劇などと歌われてますが、出血は全くなし。釘はドイツのクロイツナーゲル社が販売している特徴的な長い十字架のような杭です。犯人が十字架型をあえて選んだということから、宗教的な側面からも捜査を進めてます。事件の起きた21時から21時半の間に。現場周辺で壁に杭を打ちつける音が数十分続いていたという証言が複数得られました被害者の死亡推定時刻がほぼそれと同じ時間であることからおそらく被害者は現場かそのすぐ近くで殺害されたと思われます
また信憑性は怪しいですが事件現場で私立水明学園の女性とを見たという証言も上がってます An unreliable report. Oh, my bad. Ignore that. 最後に井の頭線渋谷駅トイレ殺人事件通称ヴァンパイア事件です事件発生は10月10日遺体発見は午前5時半ごろ駅員が発見しました被害者の身元は今のところ不明身元を示すような遺留品は一切ありませんでした死亡推定時刻は前日の午前10時から午後6時の間遺体の血液はすべて抜かれておりまるでミイラのような状態で放置されていましたご存知の通りこの写真が何者かによって撮影され遺体発見より15分ほど前にインターネットのオークションに出品されておりバン・グリマスト・ロトル・アズ・イ・リスン・トゥ・ディ・エクスプレーション・ワズ・ディス・ディ・キルズ・ウェイ・オブ・セイン・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・ディ・Was a weird way of showing, like, the next one. Oh, hey, we got an achievement. Oh, yeah, we're going into chapter four, D Sword. Ooh, I wonder what this chapter is about. Sign City was a pair of buildings located just south of Shibuya Scramble Crossing. The East Building was located next to Shibuya Station. There is a small plaza just inside the entrance, which was often used as a meeting spot, even if it wasn't as famous as the Hachiko or Moyai statues. A dozen or so people were in there now, waiting and playing with their phones. Hmm. We know that character. Kinda. One of them was standing alone with a curiously stern expression on her face. She was a teenage girl named Sena Aoi. If you went down the escalator on the second floor of Sign City, the one that led away from the Inokashira Line station. You would see her there, leaning against a white pillar, watching her surroundings carefully. Despite her stern expression in the season, she was nibbling on a popsicle. It was kind of cute in a way. Yeah, honestly, this is like the cutest that I've seen this character so far. I don't know if that says a lot, but either way. Of course, she wasn't waiting for anyone. She was quietly observing the people coming and going around her. From where she was standing, you could see all the way to the big TVs at Scramble Crossing. And they were showing a promo for some, fam、uh, for some famous singer, excuse me. And at the bottom of the screen was a scrolling line of text talking about the new gen murders. <clears throat> Not a day went by when she didn't see something about new gen. The TV, the papers, the net, the magazines, even the big TVs in the city. Senna wasn't interested in them at all, but walking through Shibuya, she would often hear people talking about the murders. Whose eyes are those? Lately, she'd been seeing people wearing t shirts with the question printed across their,、uh, their fronts. It had gotten its start as an underground meme in Shibuya, and now it was getting out of control. Somebody at Harujuku gift shop had started selling t shirts, and they'd,、uh, or at a Harujuku gift shop, excuse me. And they'd sold pretty well. At least that's what she'd heard a smiling man say as he passed her by on the street. It was a good sign of how little people cared about anything but themselves. Senna gave a little snort of contempt before she ate the last bite of her popsicle. She closed her eyes, the stern expression still on her face. She listened to the noise of the city. On Sundays, the area around the station was filled with many different sounds. Trains rattling into the station, taxi horns, people talking as they walked. Music from the big TVs, the inside the shops at Sign City, or and inside the shops at Sign City. Announcements endlessly telling you how to safely ride an escalator. The sounds never stopped. As soon as one ended, another took its place. All the different sounds layered together into a dissonant jumble of static. I think that's dissonant.、Uh, Senna focused on the noise, directing her attention to the people's voices. Her brain shut out any other sound, so she could hear the words clearly. Yeah, I'm not reading that out loud. I ain't reading sideways. I did see something about Phantasm, though. 
この前から超ゲロを埋めたりとかしてたねでも,これれてた<笑>でもあれじゃねこれってニュージェネの犯人に俺の殺してくださいってアピールしてるようなもんじゃん俺もいよいよ全国デビューか<笑>最近知り合いもないよ。そういうことだよ。そういうことだよ。そういうことだよ。そういうことだよ。そういうことだよ。そういうことだよ。そういうことだよ。そういうことだよ。そういうことだよ。そういうことだよ。そういうことだよ。そういうことだよ。そういうことだよ。そう In the end, the noise was just noise. Senna looked around one more time. For a while now, she'd had this awful feeling like a cold finger running down her spine. Someone's gaze was upon her, but she couldn't find out who it was. Senna stepped away from the pillar she'd been leaning up against. And then, as if she just remembered she was holding it, she stared down at the popsicle stick in her hand. That's rough. She looked even more upset as she walked quickly towards the station. I don't understand her character yet. There's a lot of characters I don't understand yet. Because that's what I wish for. I did. What the hell's happening? What is this? This is your mental world, but it's mine too. Anywhere if you wish for it. This is getting weird. I am not following shit. Hey, yo, what the fuck? Saraton was calling me. Yesterday's Blood Tune was such a great episode. Saraton had a lot of cool scenes. And there was also a sexy kiss. The animation quality was top notch, too. Saraton was calling me. Is that what that is, huh? And being super moe about it, too. I had no choice but to get up. I ripped off the covers and got off the sofa with a moan. Damn, I would、uh, probably like, stick a sharp object into my ear to、uh, stop hearing that noise. Or, you know, turn it off. When I hit the switch on the alarm, Saraton's voice abruptly stopped. My Sarah voice alarm was a treasure of mine. If you didn't flip the switch, the volume would get gradually louder and louder before switching to an intense buzzer sound. I wanted to start my morning waking up with Saraton, which meant I always tried to flip the switch before the buzzer sounded. I'd only ever fail twice. Waking up with Saraton always puts me in a great mood. Well, no, actually, playing games all night and sleeping on the hard sofa made me feel like crap. But having Saraton wake me up did make, me,、uh, did make a little bit of the pain go away. Today was a school day. I'd missed a full day last week and it was starting to throw off my schedule. I was supposed to only go twice this week, but thanks to that, I'd have to go three times. I didn't want to go, but I had to. Any more skipping and I couldn't graduate. To be honest, even if I couldn't graduate, it wouldn't make that big of a difference for me. I just had a dream about Rimi. It was a strange dream. Somehow. Nostalgic, somehow lonely, and somehow sad, and somehow incredibly distant. I wondered if she was coming to school today. I'd spent a lot of time thinking about what happened two days ago. I'd spent so much time thinking about it that it cut into my ESO time. Oh, how drastic. I didn't think much about Shogun or the delusion of the empty Shibuya. They didn't seem all that important to me. All of it was most likely just a delusion of mine. It was hard to believe that Shogun could be an old man like that, and thinking back, the idea of every single person disappearing from Shibuya just seemed silly. It was a very realistic delusion, but I found myself 
embarrassed by how easily I'd believed something so impossible could happen. What was more important, or what was more important, was Remy, uh, the girl I'd called the demon girl until just a little bit ago. In that place where it felt like a strange floating dream, she'd held me tight, and I could still remember the feeling of her body. If she hadn't done that, I might have gone crazy. Why had Remy saved me? Was it because we were friends? I didn't have any memories at all of us being classmates since our first year, or going to see a movie with her and Misumi. But the way that she treated me was the way you'd treat a good friend. When she'd held me tight, she'd looked a little like she was about to cry. That, at least, didn't seem like an act that she was putting on. I'd never met a girl who'd cry over a creepy otaku like me. After seeing it, the fear and suspicion I'd felt had just blown away. In fact, I almost felt like I could fall in love with her, though I stopped myself from going that far. What I felt most was uncertainty. How should I face Remy from here on out? Was she my friend or my enemy? Was she responsible for the new gen murders? It was an undeniable fact that she'd saved me, but it was also true that I had seen her covered in blood at the site of the crucified murder. We're also an unreliable source. I stopped at Shoto Park on my way to school. Ever since the incident with Yua, I'd quit my habit of eating breakfast here. The idea that Yua could be out there somewhere watching me made it impossible to enjoy my meal. And even worse, if she came to talk to me, I'd have to listen to a bunch of a bunch more delusional nonsense. I didn't have time to deal with her. Yua works for Rimi. That was my original idea, but it may have been wrong. That didn't mean that Yua wasn't my enemy, though. Maybe Shogun was the big boss and Yua was working for him. Whatever the case, it'd be best if I stayed away from her. But today, I'd come here for some reason anyway. I looked around carefully to make sure Yua was nowhere to be seen, and then I slowly sat down on my bench. I took a bite out of the chocolate pastry I'd bought at the convenience store and looked out at the lake. There was barely any wind, and the water's surface was still and calm. Once in a while, I could see what might be a carp moving around the cloudy water. There was nobody in the park today, which was rare. It was a very quiet space. As I looked around the park, I found myself thinking about Remy again. To be honest, I'd almost decided not to go to school today just to avoid facing her again. That's why I'd come here to the park to buy some time. I felt like I'd said all kinds of awful things to her. But she'd always smile, or she'd always smiled and been kind to me. And I was sure if I went to school again, she'd come up to talk to me like she always had. She pretended that what we'd experienced in front of the 107 had never happened. She'd smile and treat me like a friend. Part of her constantly cheerful nature did seem a little obnoxious, but it also felt like if I stayed with her, I might start to feel cheerful too. What should I say when I meet her? I didn't think of her as a demon anymore. But it was also true that I didn't think of her as a friend. Misumi had said that she and I had been friends and classmates for over a year and a half, but I had no memories of that at all. Maybe something had broken within me after all. But could my memories of Rimi disappear while everything else remained intact? Was that possible? Hmm. I went into the school building, head pointed toward the ground as always. I did my usual thing of walking slowly on the side of the hallway while I headed for the stairs. My class was on the third floor. It was kind of a pain to get there. I wished there was an escalator, actually. Uh, oh, oh, okay, I was like, who's this? But, uh, this is the new girl, right? Yeah, this is, this is the new girl. I think. Is it? As I got up to the stairs, I saw a girl slowly staggering up them. She was dragging her right leg. Did she sprain it or something? Her tiny body was kind of wobbling as she walked. She looked like she might fall over at any minute. The other students were quickly passing her while she went slowly up each step. 
From below, I could almost see her panties. Crap. If I didn't do something, I'd look like a pervert. I didn't want anybody calling me a creep, and I tried to quickly walk past her when... <laughs> Did we trip her? What happened there? The girl tripped on the stairs and staggered forward. <laughs> lovely. Just, just fucking lovely. And then she fell hard, right on her face. Fortunately, she was standing on the landing when she'd fallen, so she didn't end up rolling down the stairs. But she was just lying there on her knees, not moving. Was this the beginning of something romantic? Not a chance. Even if it was, I didn't have the courage to talk to her. I quickly slipped past her. Sorry, but get help from Misumi or somebody else who likes 3D girls. Don't expect anything from me. <laughs> but the girl still wasn't moving, and I started to get a little worried. When I got halfway up to the second set of stairs, I turned around to check on her. She was clinging to the railing and trying her hardest to stand up. Her knees were shaking like she was a newborn deer. And there was blood on her knee. Maybe she'd scraped it. Huh. I'd seen her face somewhere before. Was she the one who transferred into my class last week? Was... Well, what was her name again? I couldn't remember. And she was crying too. Did it hurt that badly? Sure, it was a bad fall, but it shouldn't have been enough to make her cry. Nobody else was trying to help her. She finally managed to just barely stand up, and then began to look down at her knee. She seemed to be checking how badly it was hurt. <laughs> she wiped away her tears, and then put down her bag and started to rummage through it. What was she trying to find, I wondered. She suddenly pulled something out of her bag and held it above her head like she'd won a great victory. In her fingers, she held a bandage. <laughs> Our eyes met. She quickly flushed with embarrassment and looked down. Well, she seemed okay. She didn't need any of, or she didn't need my help at least, right? I decided to just head to my classroom and leave her there. That's the Chad move. I kept my head down and my gaze glued to my feet as always. I arrived at my seat wordlessly. Actually, hadn't that girl said something to me on the day she transferred here? I'd forgotten all about it with what had happened with Rimi, but what had she meant? You, Taku. As always, Misumi said hello to me. Maybe he didn't have any friends besides me. That would explain why he only ever seemed to talk to me, at least. で、俺とリミトでこっそり盗み聞きしてみたらびっくりしたぜ。その二人刑事だったんだぜ。え？ディテクティブス？なんか新国層に全校生徒の名簿とか見てたよ。もしかしてニュージェネと関係あんのかな
小杉ちゃん見なかったか小杉 ?Who's that? ああ、そっか。どうせお前のことだから覚えてねえとは思ったけど。マジでそうだったんだな。先週転校してきたこのことだよ。折原小杉ちゃん。Oh, so her name was Kozue Orihara. Ka. Kaidan de. Kaidan? Mita. Oh, Zuka. Ja, Mosu Kurna. Mizumi's voice was filled with eager anticipation. I hadn't seen him this alive since he'd found out that Fess was a girl in the next class over a few days ago. I'd never seen him excited about anything that didn't involve girls, actually. Come to think of it, hadn't he tried to hit on the transfer student on, the, on her first day, too? It was kind of impressive, actually, especially since he already had a girlfriend. Nah, Kozue chan te, maji kawaii to o a r e I wasn't sure how to answer that. I gave him a vague nod, he seemed to take it as a yes. Taro! Ore hitome de kini ichi matta yo! なんか守ってやりたくなるんだよな男子みんなも同じ意見だよどいつも可愛いって言ってんだけどよ女子の間じゃあんま評判良くねえんだよなまだ転校してきたばっかだぜそれなのに早くもうざいみたいな意見まで出てきてんだよこのクラスの女子って性格悪いやつ多すぎだそれって大臣のせいじゃないの大体いいそのうざいって言ったのどうせ大臣の彼女でしょあああそうだけどそりゃあ彼女にしてみればうざいに決まってるよ自分の彼氏が目の前で折原さんを口説きに行っちゃってたらさ私でさえよく喧嘩売られるんだから大輔君に近寄らないでって。しかも一人じゃなくて何人かから言われたマジ<笑>自覚なしか少しは反省したらいやだねハプリンいやーモテる男はつらいぜいや<笑>、yeah, that's, that's the terminology right there これだよ、that's it. さすが女の敵もう私フォローしてあげないからねあ折原さん来たなんか怪我してるみたいじゃない本当だどうしたんだろう It was from when she tripped on the staircase Of course I didn't tell them that For now I wanted to minimize the amount of time I spent talking to Remy 俺ちょっと行ってくれ Misumi ran off toward the transfer student Remy was now the only one standing next to me Please Misumi don't leave me Uh oh It's delusion time. Hmm, methinks bad delusion this time around. Rimi didn't say a thing, but she didn't make any move to leave either. I kept staring down at my desk so I couldn't see the look on her face. I could only see her waist, but I could tell that she was facing me. She was looking at me. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm dying. Or am I? I don't know. All right, delusion time. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Bad delusion time. I had to say something. I had to say something, anything. But we're just going to leave it awkward, aren't we? Is this the bad delusion? <laughs> just awkwardness? I didn't know what to say. The more I tried to think, the more my mind began to go blank. <laughs> What the fuck? Suddenly, Remy wiped her nose. Out of sheer reflex, I looked up in surprise. <laughs> she was crying. I didn't know why, but she was sobbing. I felt even more confused. So I just sat there silently like an idiot. I couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> Remy spoke in a teary voice. This is the bad delusion? 
話しかけないからごめんね私邪魔だよね And then she turned around and walked out of the classroom. I wanted to scream, that's not true. I wanted to tell her. I just didn't know how to talk to her. That was all. I thought about going after her, but in the end, I couldn't get up from my seat. Even if I did, what should I say to her? What could I say? Do I say I love you? Do I say we're friends? Impossible. I didn't know anything about Remy. Sure, she'd saved me the other day. But she was still this mysterious person who just come into my life out of nowhere. I didn't know if I liked her or not. I didn't have any memories of her I could use to decide. Ah. Yusumi came back from talking to the transfer student. He looked at me with pity in his eyes. What the heck? When did, when did that happen? I shook my head violently. Yep. If you can't fix it in high school, you're fucked. I never spoke to Remy again after that, all the way up to graduation. Oh my god. Even when we'd see each other in class, we avoided each other. And then after graduation, just like Misumi said, I became a neat forever and never saw Remy again. That is the worst bad delusion I think we've come across so far. Maybe I'd end up with a bad ending like that. That'd be pretty sad. But it was just the simple truth that I didn't know anything about Rimi. I had no choice but to sit there in silence. Taku? Since I wasn't saying a single word, Rimi seemed a little scared when she talked to me. But I couldn't even react. From her perspective, it must look like I was ignoring her. In my mind, I knew this wasn't right, but I still couldn't bring myself to do anything. And this time, I nodded desperately. I probably looked really weird. Her tone was gentle. Somehow unbelievably, I had managed to avoid the bad ending. She wants to know if I'm okay, huh? Suddenly, I wanted to ask her. When she'd seen me in front of the 107, how had the world looked to her? From the fact that she hadn't brought them up, she might not know anything about the people disappearing from Shibuya or Shogun in his wheelchair. Did that mean they really were part of my delusion? I wanted to ask Rimi that, but I didn't feel like I could raise my head and ask any more questions. Not today, anyway. I wasn't ready. I'd ask, uh, I'd ask next time, next time I came to school. Yeah, th that was it. I'd take some time and think about everything I needed to ask. Uh-oh. The transfer student? Why would she be coming over here? Was she going to get mad at me for not helping her on the stairs? She didn't look like that type of girl. Maybe she wanted to talk to Remy and not me. <sighs> the transfer student stopped right next to Remy. She wasn't saying anything. What was going on? With Remy there, I couldn't look up. The transfer student's feet seemed to be nervously fidgeting, but she didn't say anything. For some reason, she put a single bandage down on the edge of my desk. It was a fancy one, and had a weird character, Gero Froggy, on it, of course. Was she giving me this? I wasn't sure how to react to that. This transfer student, Kazoe Orihara, was a bit of an odd one, but we're totally not. Huh? Was she crying? Was she crying because I didn't say anything? Uh, but she didn't say anything either, right? Rimi backed me up. It felt strange. I didn't know anything about Rimi. 
But she knew all about me. The transfer student bowed and ran back to her own seat. Why had she given it to me? I could sense Misumi coming back. Thought I heard a noise. I wonder what that was. Maybe it was a ghost. まだ出してねえっつーの。うんで、まあ、1時間ぐらいかけてあちこち回ったんだけど、もう俺一人で延々と喋り続けたよ。あの時はさすがにじーっと疲れたぜ。しかもすぐ泣きべそかく。そうそ